TV Wonder's sister was found dead in reportedly one of the saddest conditions ever. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. The year was a tragic one for soul icon Stevie Wonder. The world watched as he cried while mourning the death of his dear friend, the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, on national television. However, little did most fans know, it was just 3 months prior to Aretha's passing that his younger sister died as well. Stevie was and probably still is dealing with the weight of that grief. What is even more sad is that Stevie's sis was reportedly found deceased in a manner that no one should ever have to suffer. She was also the youngest of Lula Mae Hardaway's six children: Stevie, Larry, Milton, Renee, and Calvin. As an adult, Renee had co-written songs with Stevie, including "I Can Not Help It," which appeared on Michael Jackson's "Off the Wall" album. According to reports, Renee Linda Hardaway's body was discovered inside her home. It was determined that she had been dead for perhaps days. She was so badly decomposed that she was almost unrecognizable. The cause of death was not publicized. For Stevie, Renee's death was heartbreaking. Even though it was reported that their once closeness had widened, several who were close to the circumstance stated that Renee's son, Alpha Lorenzo Walker, attempted to extort millions of dollars from Stevie by threatening to tell the media bogus news that would tarnish Stevie's reputation. With Stevie's help, his nephew was caught red-handed at trying to pull off the lie. because of nifty police work the nephew was sent to prison as a result of his diabolical plot against stevie she was a delight said john lindsay stevie's former electronics engineer she was funny and outgoing i always thought she would be an entertainer renee is buried at forest lawn memorial park in los angeles in the same resting place as her and stevie's mother it was a star studded and ostentatious home going fit for royalty we will have never known a queen like this Stevie Wonder told the gathering of mourners Aretha Franklin's funeral service in Detroit on Friday drew some of music's brightest stars and a sprinkling of political figures for a proper send-off for the Queen of Soul. What needs to happen today, not only in this nation but throughout the world, is that we need to make love great again. Wonder said during a eulogy nestled between his performances of the Lord's Prayer and as Because black lives do matter, because all lives do matter. That is what Aretha said throughout her life. Though the pain she gave us the joy and said let's make love great again Franklin's arrival in repose at the city's Greater Grace Temple on Friday morning was met by a throng of mourners who had waited hours to pay their respects Many ultimately couldn't get in as the church quickly reached capacity At the morning's onset she lay gracefully in her casket legs crossed in tall high heels as the open gold plated coffin glinted under the lights It had been transported to the church by the same pearly white 1940 Cadillac LaSalle hearse that took the civil rights icon Rosa Parks to her final rest in 2005 as well as Franklin's own father in 1984. Ever the diva, Franklin's outfit was the third costume change over the course of her several viewings since her death on the 16th of August. This final time, a rose gold gown. She was first Detroit's, then America's, then the world's. Thank you, Lord, for Aretha. Pastor L Branch told the rapt congregation The Revel Shopton, Jesse Jackson, Louis Farrakhan and former president Bill Clinton made quite the lineup next to each other on the dais in front of a gospel choir belting out an extended version of Marvelous Thanks for watching like share and subscribe